Good morning. Good morning and thanks for joining us. Uh, to this morning's webinar is on what is an MVP. My name is Monique Wright and I'm the Expansion Manager here at Reinteractive. This morning's webinar will be hosted by Errol Schmidt, our Sales Manager. So please feel free to ask questions throughout the webinar and uh, yeah, we'll answer them as best we can. So please take it away, Errol. Great. Thanks very much. And hello, everyone, and welcome very much to this webinar. I uh, really appreciate you attending today. I appreciate it's a very short week for everyone, and we're all very busy trying to get everything done. Uh, but having said that, I really want to give you some value. We'll make it uh, as short as we can. We'll make it as informative as we possibly can, as Monique just said. Feel free to ask your questions. Uh, jump in anytime you want to and ask your questions. I'll try to keep up with them. I'll, I'll, um, I'll watch out for them. Um, and it is important that I, I want everybody to really understand what it is that we're discussing here and how this relates to you and your business. So let's just jump into it. You know, I, I do have some slides and of course the slides are going to be as informal as I possibly can. Here's what we're going to go over today. The subject of course is of course, what are the benefits of an MVP? So the most important thing is what is an MVP? Let's define that first up. I'll get into that in just one second. Because really, when we're talking about an MVP, that's the most important thing to know. If you sort of understand what the definition of MVP is, then you can understand how things roll out from there. Once we've looked at what that MVP is, we'll look at speed versus features versus budget. These are probably the three most important factors when it comes to building any piece of software. Um, and how do they all fit in together? And how does that fit into what an MVP is? The next point is, of course, validating your ideas. How do you work out what's right, what's wrong? How does it all fit in? How to say no, we're gonna discuss that because that's probably the most important thing as a stakeholder, how to say no, and then where do we go to next? Okay, so we've looked at what we're gonna cover. That was pretty easy. Uh, how can this help you? What is the purpose of this? Well, obviously we wanna prepare and create a piece of software and you're gonna be a stakeholder in this. And by a stakeholder, you could be the owner of the piece of software, you could be an investor in that software, you could be the end user of that, you could be the developer, you could be the project manager, you could be the lead engineer. And any of those people, any of those stakeholders, and there's probably a bunch more that I've forgotten about as well, any of those people need to know exactly what an MVP is, because if you don't know what an MVP is, it's going to end up badly. And boy, do I have a great example to tell you about, but I'm going to tell you about that in a second. Uh, my background, just so you know, you know, obviously I run sales and that sort of thing for, for reinteractive right now today, but I've been a developer in the past. So I've experienced many different viewpoints and aspects of how this works. Okay. Definition of MVP, minimum viable product. All three of those words are very important. Here's the set definition. This is, if you looked it up on the internet, here's what it's going to say an MVP is. The smallest set of features that can be brought to market that allow for a workable version of your application that can be used by your target market and provides a level of exchange with them, usually meaning monetized. Uh, there's a lot in that. There's a lot of words in that. And they're all sort of important. So the smallest set of features that can be brought to market. Now, I don't necessarily like brought to market because MVP doesn't necessarily mean it's at a complete marketplace. It could be a beta test group of people. Could be your, you know, your MVP might just go to a thousand people to start with, or a hundred people, or to twenty people to start with. That could be your MVP. But it's enough features that something can be done. It's a workable version of your application. So right away you get the idea, and you know straight away that's not everything. A workable version of your application means the things sort of fit together. They do something. I'll give you an example of that straight up. A particular application that I know of quite well wanted to bring an MVP to market and they needed to receive money for what they were doing. And that money then became a subscription service. So it re-signed month to month to month, etc. Now, whilst you might not think it's a big deal connecting a payment provider and making sure the recurrent, recurring payments happen and connecting that to zero so that invoices get sent out every month, 
you go, okay, that's not that much work. That's, you know, week here or week there. It starts to add up. So if you're trying to produce something on a small budget and get it out to market as quickly as you can, you don't, you know, adding weeks is not necessary. So provide a page, let someone put their credit card number in. Sure, you're going to use Stripe to do that because you don't want to handle the credit card, but let them do that part. And then you can manually invoice it. You can manually process that card every month. You don't have to automate all of that a couple of months down the track. And in this case, for that particular application, it was actually a couple of years down the track that you can turn on payment processing, you can turn on automated invoicing, you can turn on automating the whole process of renewing the subscription every month or allowing someone to cancel if they want instead of just sending you an email. So that is a workable version. You don't have to, you know, you might think, oh, that's counterintuitive, don't take the money. Yeah, take the money, but just do it manually. Okay, so the workable version of your application that can be used by your target market, you have to define what that target market is. Who is your application going to? Is it a B2B application and it's only going to be other businesses using it? Is it a particular type of person? Is it an older group? And perhaps the user interface has to be adjusted for that. Is it going to be uh, a young group and they only want a mobile phone app rather than a web desktop based application, etc.? provides a level of exchange. Now, usually that means you want to take some money. So monetizing is important because when you get that MVP to market, you want to get something back for it. You want to start making some money day one. If indeed making money is what you want to do with your application, mostly that is the case. It's got to make some money. It should at least replace the money it costs to build it and market it and all of that sort of stuff. The next important thing to know is this, MVP is not known at the start, it's developed. What you will start off with is an idea, some bright idea, some, okay, we're going to do this incredible thing. And then you're going to work out what are the features that I need to have in order to bring that to market. So that's a thing that gets developed. The MVP is something that gets developed. What you don't want to do is develop that MVP with a developer because the developer takes a lot of money and a lot of time and a lot of attention, try to do it in a different way. There's different ways of doing this at Reinteractive. We do a workshop process. So we have someone that can ask a lot of questions and draw out of the customer, what are the features that they want? Um, and then we move on to a UX phase. UX is cheaper because it's one person just working with the client backwards and forwards, send it to them, let them test it, let them survey it, all that sort of stuff, which we'll get into in a moment but it's an easier process and it's not quite as expensive and it can go through lots of iterations without having to undo things constantly. So when we're talking about an MVP, you want to get from that idea, that seminal thing that you have, you know, this bright idea of this thing that's going to absolutely kill it in the marketplace and no one else is doing it yet, some innovation. So you want to get from that idea to something happening in the shortest possible time. Something happening is that, you know, get something to market. So as I said, workshop your ideas first, do the UX first, do something that's going to figure it out. And then you can take that to your target group of people. That target group of people is, um, who are the stakeholders? You know, who are the investors? Who are the people that are going to um, want to have some input into what you're doing? I'm going to say something here, which is actually quite important, which is that, um, let me show you the slides actually. There's a couple of different ways of doing this. One is to have that idea, take it to your, um, take it to your target investment group and try to encourage investment money out of them, you know, get some seed funding, get some series A funding, all of that sort of thing. And that's a good way to do it. It pulls in money. The problem with doing it that way is okay, you, you might lose some equity of your, of your business, of your idea. That might be an acceptable thing for you and that's okay. Um, but part of the problem with that is it can often bring in more money than it really should. You know, someone might choose to invest a couple of hundred thousand dollars into your application and that can be easily spent. Built, You go, okay, great, I've got all this money. I can build what I want to now. So you start to build features that aren't really going to add up to a complete product. It, they're not going to add up to that MVP, minimum viable product. So a good way for an investor to do it is to find out what the MVP is first, then put the money into just that and nothing else, then let it make some money. The other way of doing it, and probably for a lot of people, this is preferable, is come up with the idea, 
find just enough money to build that and then send it off to the market and then let the market replace the money. In other words, start selling the thing that you're going to sell, let it make some money, that money goes back into it and that continues. And that, that ends up with being a more viable business for many people. For some, that investment process is the best way to do it. It's up to you and your business model. What we want to arrive at is a good balance between features, budget, and speed of development. These are three very, very important factors. And I'm going to tell you something which is fundamental and basic to all software development. And that is the features that you want are always going to be more expensive and take longer than you have. It's just a fundamental basic law. You're not going to have enough money and enough time to build all of the features. So you have to be critical about the features that you want. You're going to have to slash those features. You're going to have to have as few features as you possibly can get away with so that you can afford it and so that it gets done in the right period of time. By right, right period of time, as quickly as possible, get something to market as quickly as possible. It might not be the full thing. It might not be the complete thing, but get something to market. Um, I'm going to tell you an example of this. Uh, years ago when I was a developer, and I'm talking 10 years ago now, um, back in the bad old days of developing in PHP, and I'm sorry about that, um, a person came to me and said, you know, I want you to build an application for me and I have this great idea. And I didn't really have a good concept of what all of this meant. I knew how to write something, a web application. I knew how to do that part. What I didn't understand was what an MVP was and how a business model needs to fit into that. And so this guy, I say, okay, yes, I have the time. I have the resources. I can do that for you. Um, and he says, here's my idea. And this guy was so full of enthusiasm about his idea. He was just, you know, this was the idea that was going to be better than Facebook. It was going to be better than, you know, like this was the thing that was going to kill the market. And I heard his idea and in my mind, I'm going, that's a dreadful idea. I can't imagine anyone wanting that. But I didn't say that to him. In fact, I said to him, that sounds great. I've got a fantastic idea. I can build that for you. And then I didn't have a concept of, okay, let's maybe, maybe it's not a great idea, but if we define the features well, we can deliver a small enough product so that we can get something to market. And maybe I'm wrong and that's okay, but the market's going to let us know. But I didn't do that. I just let the scope get bigger and bigger and bigger and grow and grow. And eventually I arrived at a point where I went, I can't do this anymore. And I quit the job. I quit the, the thing. And the guy went off to another developer got the thing done at vast expense, I might add, you know, he had deep pockets. So at vast expense, he got the thing built and um, no one used it. It was a waste of money, which leads me to my next point. Um, well, actually, it's a, there's a couple of points here. To work out your MVP, you have to survey. Um, surveying means validating your idea. Now, unfortunately, when I say survey, most people think of this. I say, you know, have you surveyed your idea? Well, yes, of course. You know, I've asked lots of people and they all agree this is a good idea. Well, who did they ask? Who would you ask if you were wanting to bring something to market and you had some great idea? Typically, and, you know, excuse me because I don't know what you've answered, but most people will ask their friends and their family. I think about it. Think about, you know, your best friend, you've known this person for, I don't know, 10 years, let's say. You go, here's my great idea I'm going to bring to market. Do you think they're going to tell you what a bad idea it is? Absolutely not. They're going to tell you what a great idea it is. It is. Think about, ask, ask your mum, you know, I've got this great idea. Mum, what do you reckon about this? It's going to make a ton of money. We're all going to be rich. Everyone's going to be happy. I'll have enough. I'll buy you a house and a car. It's going to be great. What's mum going to say? No, that's a bad idea. What are you thinking of there? No, mum's going to go, that's a great idea. Oh, I'm so proud of you. So the truth is you have to ask people that are going to be honest with you. Probably they're random people. Probably they're people you don't know. So you're going to, A, define your target market. Okay, it's people between 18 and 55. This is my target market. They live in Australia. They live in capital cities. They've got a mobile phone and they've got a, a, a laptop computer. These are my target market. Okay, great. We know who they are. 
Now we're going to go and ask them about the application, this idea that you have and some of the features. The next thing is you've got to ask them the right questions. What are the right questions? Well, they're not, do you think this is a good idea or does this look nice to you? People will probably say, yeah, looks nice. It's good. You're going to ask them, is this a feature you would use? Is this something you would use? Is this something that would be valuable to you? And they might go, yeah, that's definitely something I would use. That's a great idea. Uh, next question, would you pay for it? No, why would I pay for that? So right away, you know, okay, that's not a, that's not going to work. But if they say, yeah, you know what? I would, I would give you 10 bucks for that. Okay, great. We're onto something now. Now we have something. Okay, let's ask a few more questions. If I did this as well, would that be valuable to you? Well, yeah, but you know, it doesn't actually add that much to it. Okay, fine. So we know that's not MVP. Push that off to the side. If it didn't have this, what would you do? Well, I wouldn't use it. Okay, great. So now we're starting to hone in on. We're starting to, we're starting to look at what is going to work and what's not going to work. So when you're surveying, don't survey yourself. Don't go. Would I use this? What do I think about this? Because of course you came up with the idea. You're going to say, yeah, it's wonderful. It's magnificent. Don't ever survey yourself. Survey people you probably don't know. Survey people that owe you nothing. Survey people that are going to be brutally honest with you. Might seem a bit mean, might seem a bit horrible, but ask them and get honest honest feedback from them, like, you know, ask questions to draw out, you know, why do you think that's good? Or why would you use that? Or what would you use that for? To get, you know, a little bit more information, not yes, it's good. No, it's not, you know? Okay, so that's how to survey. And that's how to ask the right questions. From that, you start to zero in on what are your features that are the MVP. Next thing is saying no. This is something that a lot of, um, developers have trouble with. I know I did when, you know, that example that I was telling you about, I had absolutely no idea how to say no to that client or how to say, I don't think that part is going to work. Let's send this to market and try that. Instead, you know, I started just building everything all at once, build it all. And, you know, the failure was inevitable. So as a stakeholder, you have to have the courage to say no. What is courage? Courage is that ability to say something that might be, well, it might be a little bit uncomfortable. It might be a little bit, um, uh, some people might even find it somewhat aggressive. I don't know, but you're going to have to say no. Do it as politely as you can. Do it in the nicest possible way. But if you as a developer or you as a product owner find yourself creating something that you're pretty sure no one's going to use, you've just wasted everybody's time. You've wasted their money. And we're bringing something to market at the end of the day. Imagine a user looking at a feature on an application and going, why did they develop this? This is useless to me. This is useless to, you know, this serves no purpose. So we don't want that. When you're assessing what to say no to, who will use the feature? How will you pay for the feature? And will the app work without the feature? There's an important question. So when, let's say you're a developer and you're busy programming the thing away, the client comes to you and says, this is fantastic. It's great. Just before we finish, I want to add this menu item up the top here. That's going to produce some, let's say it's a, a, I want to add a blog into this. So you can say to the client, okay, I can definitely build that for you. It's no problem. It's going to be two weeks of work to build that. Everything's two weeks. It's going to take two weeks of work to build. It's going to be, you know, it's going to cost you $12,000 to build that thing. Um, Will the application work without it? Would somebody use this app and find value in it without that feature? If the answer is yes, then it's not in the MVP. Don't build it. That's pretty simple. It's a simple question that you can ask. And it's easier than just saying no as well, because you're throwing it back and going, okay, you know, if the answer comes back, no, this is actually crucial to the application. Without this, the application doesn't work. I've just, you know, we've surveyed it, we've talked to all the stakeholders and we've realized that the application actually doesn't work if we don't put this menu item here and it's gotta be in pink and it's gotta be bold. It won't work. Okay, great, we'll, we will build that for you then. So that's a way to sort of um, zero in on it, to work out 
what do I push back on and what don't I? When, when you're building something like a large piece of software, uh, you know, I mentioned this throw between time and money and features, you know, that always happens. There's this, there's this game that always happens between those three elements. Um, and walking into something, you have to be able to know what it's going to cost, you know, and a, a piece of software to build, you know, an MVP, $150,000, $200,000. That seems to be the price range. You know, that's sort of the target price to build an MVP. A piece of software might cost considerably more than that. You're probably not going to get away with considerably less than that. So when you walk into it, and I know from a sales viewpoint, walking into it and speaking to a client, you say to that client, um, how much are you prepared to spend on this? And they go, well, you know, I'm not going to tell you the answer to that because if I tell you how much I'm going to spend, you'll just price it to that. And the answer is, of course, well, if that's what you have to spend on this thing, that's what it's going to cost you anyway, right? Like you can't go over it because that's what you have to spend. And uh, if we go under that, you're probably going to find extra features to go up to that budget. So you might as well tell me now, what do you, you know, what do you, what do you think you're going to spend on this? And you can find out straight away, right at the top of your discussion, is this person realistic about what's happening here? You know, is there something I'm going to have to push back on straight away from the top? Or do they have a realistic expectation of this? Because if the client comes back and says, okay, I, you know, I want to spend 50K on this, there's no way we're going to get it done in 50K. You know, let's start working this out. Let's, you know, let's look at how, how this could be and how we could do it. I usually find most people are pretty realistic on this point, you know, 150K, okay, we know that's what it's going to spend, 200K maybe. Um, and so long as I can educate on that point at the start, and then I can go about helping that client to find that budget. Um, and we can do that, you know, that workshop process that I mentioned at the start, a good workshop should produce some documentation for the client, you know, should produce uh, a good detailed scope and the UX, if you've done the UX as well. And these are great things to show to an investor. You know, if you want to take something to an investor, take them something with nice pictures on it and showing that you've actually thought about how this thing is going to work. If I was an investor, I know that's what I would want to look at. You know, have they put enough thought and effort into how will this work? Um, and if you've done that correctly, you probably won't have to push back on too much later on. Like if you've done that full scope and you've, worked out you know what is the budget then there's less to push back on and the client is well educated and I, I think this is an important point because when you you're starting off this process have a clear expectation of cost you know have the conversation it might be uncomfortable it might be you know people don't always like to talk about the money but you have to be honest about it because if you're not honest about it that is definitely going to be a problem later on you know, nobody wants their development firm or their developer or the project manager to just add a week on, you know, I don't know how long this is going to take total. We're just going to do it week by week by week. And inevitably that's just going to take far too long. And I've known developers who have done it that way, uh, doesn't work because eventually the client runs out of money and nothing's built. That's what happens. I've taken over projects that have been done in that way. And they're just, they're disasters. And I, I, I'm, I feel bad for the client because they literally have to re-spend all of that money now. So have a, a clear expectation of cost. Have a clear expectation of time as well. Because if you think that a piece of software is going to be built in a month, it's not. That's just the truth of it. We want to build something really fast though. Like if it's starting to take a year, okay, that's far too long to get to market. So three months, yep. I mean, if if... The guys are really efficient. Three months is possible. Six months, expect that. Expect six months. And sometimes if it's a bigger thing and it's going to take a little bit more innovation, like, you know, there's a little bit more, there's stuff here that nobody's done before, that might take six months. That might take a little bit longer. And if it's, you know, pretty straightforward and we know everything about it and it's, you know, okay, maybe that is three months. So have a clear expectation of time at the start before you sign off at anything. Again, that workshop process would want to tell you that. Survey and validate all of your features. Make sure that um, 
you really know that's what the market wants. And you might be developing a new thing that the market has never seen before, but that doesn't mean you can't survey it and get people's reaction to that thing. If nobody's ever done it before and you bring it to someone as a survey and they look at that and go, what is that? The market probably didn't ever need it. You know, if a lot of people say that, maybe one person might be upset. Okay, fine. If you survey a hundred people and they all go, why would I ever use that? then you haven't got something that people need. You just had an idea that you thought was a good one. If, however, you have an idea and you take it to the market and you throw it to a couple of people, they go, man, that is amazing. I would pay money for that. Okay, start building. Start work on that one right away. Or if you, you know, you might find um, 20 businesses that are willing to put money into it, that might be a good reason to go ahead because those businesses, if they're the end user or they're someone who's an important stakeholder and they're willing to invest in it, that might be enough to tell you this is a good thing because people aren't going to stump their money if they think it's a bad idea. Be realistic about the MVP. Um, I'm saying this not because I don't want people to have grand plans and think as big as possible. I'm saying this because um, you have to be realistic. You have to be willing to be brutal with that MVP. You have to be willing to go slash, 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 and just end up with that one thing that is the killer idea, the core of it all. Get that to the market, then start adding your iterations, and then think as big as you like. And even when you're adding iterations, I'll, I'll just say as well, all of these factors still apply. You know, you, you come up with a great fit, you know, you've got this application, okay, people are using it now, let's add another feature. Do, does the market actually want that feature? Is it a feature that's going to bring in money? Is it a feature that's going to work? It, you know, be as realistic as you can. I'll use Facebook as an example here. Facebook is probably the worst example. I mean, the best example because it's the worst. Uh, killer idea to start with. You know, let's connect people up. And let's do it as seamlessly as possible. It wasn't even a new idea when it was brought out, but it was done in such a way, it was rolled out in such a way that it worked. But some hubris entered in. Hubris is like, you know, people thought too much of themselves, one person in particular, of course, and they start to think they can get away with anything. And so you start to end up with a platform that's overly monetized, you know, too many ads, too much interruption, too much I want to take from you rather than here's a fair exchange of money and features. Uh, and then started to add features that were designed not in the best interests of the user, but in the best interests of how do we keep people stuck to this so they keep giving us more and more information that we can then sell it ends up being something which is a declining thing. The users aren't being surveyed. The people being surveyed are the board of directors and the shareholders. That's who's being surveyed. Do you think you're getting enough return on your investment? No? Great. Let's add another feature that's going to make some more money then. That's not a survey. <laughs> that's not a good survey. The last point is education. Education starts right at the start. It's a webinar like this. It's articles. It's conversations with people that have done it before. It's speaking to the stakeholders. It, education is uh, such an important step early on to do. If you fail to um, do the education step, then you end up with, you know, I know this from a sales viewpoint. If I don't speak to the clients in such a way that I'm explaining to them what an MVP is, how an MVP works, what is the process for software development, uh, how is it going to work, how is it going to launch, what happens after the launch, all of these things, the questions that I know they have or will have in the future, I can answer them and provide all the resources for that and make sure they're fully understood. Again, it's part of the workshop process, but don't ever negate your own responsibility on it, whoever you are as a stakeholder. Maybe you're an investor, maybe you're um, the owner of a business that develops software, maybe you're the person wanting to develop that piece of software, you know, the, um, the product owner. Any of those people, you can't negate your own responsibility on any of these points, in particular on the education point. Educate and educate until you are the expert on the subject. And then when someone comes to you and says, I need this extra feature, it'll be easy for you to just say, no, why would I do that? Because you're so well educated, you're so well versed in exactly what it is. 
that really concludes what is an MVP and what is the benefit of an MVP. It stops you wasting money. It stops you spending too much time and it gives you the exact set of features that you need to take to market so that you can iterate on the rest. You're not going to overwhelm your users with too much information, with too much. You just want one good feature that's going to work. You know, that's what an MVP is. Um, if you apply what I just said in this webinar, you'll have a successful application. I've done this many, many times. I've done it wrong and I've done it right a lot of times. And hopefully I do it more and more right as time goes on. And I hope everybody listening does that as well. I want to ask if you have any questions though, because um, uh, I want to make sure, you know, everybody sort of has their own questions answered and knows how to apply this for themselves. It's okay. If you don't have any questions, that's okay. And probably there's some people listening on LinkedIn as well, um, who probably can't ask me a question, but that's okay. Um, but is there anything that you would like to know about this? Is there anything that, um, um, that will help you to understand this better? Is there anything you would like to see in a future webinar that could add to this or could, you know, illustrate this point better? No, if there's nothing else, I'd like to thank you all very much for coming to this webinar today. And I hope it was valuable to you. I hope it was informative and was educational for you. Thank you. And I'll see you in the next webinar. Thank you.